poly mesh, unified skin, and adaptive skin. Okay, so all the skinnings. Now, when I have Z spheres, when I hit A on the keyboard, I get this preview. And, you know, certainly it looks like this is this place to sculpt. Okay, you're like, oh wow, I can sculpt in this, no problem. And then you hit A, and then you hit A again, and you can still see your sculpts there. Um, just be warned that uh, things will occur that you probably do not want them to occur if you start sculpting on this thing. And here's the density of the sculpt. Okay, so like this is your density. Okay, so I can go in here and do some crazy stuff. Go back to Z-Sphere mode and rotate this. If I hit A, it's still there. Now in old ZBrush world, I would say never ever ever do that. Okay. In the new ZBrush land though, however, I urge students to do this. But just be warned because things could happen. So, um, take for instance, if I threw in a Z-Sphere here, what happens? Well, it goes away. Why? Because the topology changed in the area. So, now your thing is gone. So, be very careful about how you treat these Z-Spheres and respect them. Because they will kick you when you're down. Okay, so, that being said, I'm just going to get my initial weird shape here again good that's good maybe take off these things leaving me something of a zen quality behind now the skins alright so there's an adaptive skin there's make a poly mesh which is located here after I click A I can get to that and there is a unified skin down below here what are all these skins okay when dealing with Z spheres just know that the adaptive skin is the more most preferred state and here's why let me make an adaptive skin okay what happens here is I am now in the skin of this object. When I hit A, when I click on this one and I click A, notice A does not lead anywhere. So now look at I can always go back to my other tool. Here's my other tool. It's labeled Z spheres. Here's the skin of the Z spheres. Okay. By making an adaptive skin you now have the ability to lower the levels okay now let's go back to our z-spheres hit a let's go to make a poly mesh you can see the significant difference between this this is skin and this one's pm okay now with this one i can't get to the lower levels of subdivide unless I reconstruct subdivide them until it says you cannot do it any further this means that the next stage would result in a triangle which ZBrush cannot produce okay so there we go that's the difference between skin and poly mesh now let's look at the last one which is the unified skin okay in this case I get to choose the resolution choose the smooth choose the polished surface and all that I'm just gonna go with the defaults and make a unified skin and then up at the top I have I think it's this one right here Notice there's no difference between this one and this one as far as naming conventions, which makes it really hard to kind of distinguish which one's which. Uh, but you'll know that when a unified skin is made, 
you still have the lower ability. So I can still lower it. This one can still lower it. But the unified skin is to make uh, a significant change in the the mesh. To to kind of illustrate this, I think we took the cube at one point and we took it and said, well, this is just wrong. I mean, it, this is no quads whatsoever. It's got a really weird polar cap. So how do we change that? And then I showed you the unified mesh or unified skin, which is right here. And I could lower that down to eight, no smooth, and makes unified skin. So in this case, you can see a huge significant difference. Okay. So when working with harder edge geometry, that works rather well, unified skin. But in most cases, I don't even use unified skin. I mean, that's probably the only trick that I know with the unified skin that makes sense. Other than that, I'm, sh I'm sure there's other tricks out there. It's just not in my workflow. All right. So that's the difference between all the skins and the ability to sculpt on a z-sphere real time and then move it around and what the difference is is when you add a new z-sphere and change it to topology and now in the next video we're going to kind of look at sub tools all right so meet me in the next video